All right, welcome to Nerdstalker. We're here at Yerba Buena Gardens, and a freaking fire truck or something's going by here. Uh, we get, we're in front of actually the Jewish Contemporary Museum, which is a new museum here in San Francisco. And Linux World happens to be happening. Did I just actually say that happens to be happening? Uh, and so we're lucky enough to, I found out Linux Chick was here with Joel. Linux Chick, um, my name, full name is Krista Casebeer. I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, work in Kansas, so you've heard both states, um, Midwest area. We've been in San Francisco for Linux World. We've been running a podcast for a little while, but we've been out on the internet for, see, I've been Linux Chick since the 90s, so I've been around for a really long time. And Is there another Linux Chick out there now? There's a group called the Linux Chicks. Oh, okay. And those are girls that like Linux. And that's about the time when I started that name was when I got involved with the Linux Chicks when I first found Linux. So, well, a year ago on June 26th was our anniversary, our one-year anniversary. Yes, one-year anniversary, June 26th. And we celebrated one year of Alterna Geek. And that's available at alternageek.com. And we do a weekly tech show, podcast, downloadable in several different formats. And we talk about open source and internet freedoms and um, tech tips and Linux distributions and anything anybody asks. Whatever happens that week. Whatever happens that week. Whatever we can rant about, you know. But some of the, oh, some of the different things like, you know, a lot of the electronic freedoms, thing like, you know, the what the EFF's doing, right. some of the different, I know a couple weeks ago we covered some of the new Senate bills they got that are talking about, you know, copyright, privacy and stuff, and some of those bills are kind of bad, but, you know, it's the things, like she said, talking about some of the freedoms. You know, uh, well, how'd you learn all this stuff, you know, and why why Linux too? Myself, I've been a, de a software developer for like the last 22 years, and about 10 years ago, um, the company I'm at now, I've met someone else who showed me Linux and started playing with it, so I've been using primary Linux for about the last 10 years. What sort of languages were you programming in? And uh, well, primarily it's been things like uh, start off doing uh, C programming. I've done some Fortran. Um, most of what I do now is all Java or PHP, so a lot of web-based things. And then you, you know, you're more of a what sysadmin type? That's kind of the vibe I sort of distill from the shows. And correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. I I like to be a sysadmin. I originally went to college to be a developer and found that old catch-22 where if you've never been a developer, you can't be a developer. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it was really hard to find a job like that. So I got into doing some desk side support and then got into network administration and system administration and started using Linux because I liked it better. It I had control of it. I could t decide what I wanted to do with it, when I wanted to do with it, and you couldn't do that in Windows. Right. So then I got into Linux administration and I've been either there or Solaris Unix administration since. Linux world, you guys are here for Linux world. Um, talk about you know some of the highlights. So you guys, you know, you well the highlights and lowlights in your opinion, and and versus other Linux worlds that I'm sure you guys have been to. Go ahead, you got opinion on this one, don't you? Come on, <laughs> you know you want to. I do. Proceed. There was some really fun stuff, and there were some really great open source groups, and I really enjoyed the different distributions and stuff. The the communities were there, and that was interesting. There was a lot of stuff missing, and. I had originally told Joel what, a couple of days ago that I thought Linux World might be jumping the shark and getting ah. kind of old and everybody seemed to be going to the open source conference instead. Huh. And then he told me that he heard a lot of other people saying that, so maybe ah. it is. It, ah. It's kind of gone more into the commercial realm where there's a lot of commercial companies selling hardware and a lot of stuff like that and not as focused on the small open source communities that used to be there so it, do you think that's a, a result of growth though and popularity uh, thus comes the money you know thus comes marketing yeah that that has something to do with it but it seems like the community left um, hmm. there were some good sessions but there was a lot of sessions driven that weren't so they were supposed to be more advanced system administrator sessions and things like that and that wasn't there there was a session we went to today to pick up that was uh, open source and social new media and we were really psyched about that because we're in both places right the room was empty no one showed up to that you know that's, that's funny you mentioned that because i think one of the Flickr photos the first ones that you for for linux world that i saw from linux chick was uh, i think it was a keynote or something and uh and i think it was no cameras please or something and it was like all empty seats and like there's this one guy or a couple guys sitting there with their laptops open well actually when that picture was taken we were there pretty early so a lot of people hadn't quite shown up for it yet it didn't fill up a lot more past that because actually the rows of seats they had, they had the whole back half blocked off because they wanted everybody up towards the front to fill it up more. Right. And, you know, as for the number of thousands of people they say that are attending Linux World, I was kind of surprised at some of these keynotes. 
there was not like what I call real large numbers of people in these sessions, in they these keynotes. They weren't even half full. No, which, which was kind of surprising. The open source garage, the, the Linux garage they had set up and the open source pavili pavilion was probably the best places. That was a bunch of groups that got free or reduced space mm -hmm. to show off. Bug Labs was there with their modular devices and cool. and um, some nonprofit groups and you know purely open source where they're not making any money off their software whatsoever. Right. Um, and user groups and things like that. So that was that was pretty cool. I think we spent the most time in that area yes. than we did anywhere else. I hear there was like a mechanical bull type thing there. What the <laughs> hell? Is are you, are you guys shitting me or is this like <laughs> this is a hard drive or something? Oh. It's the uh, mechanical bull that. Has has been modified to look like a giant hard drive and the part you hang on to is an IDE cable and these people are just bucking around everywhere and flying off of it. Oh my God. That's <laughs> and awesome. It, and it was kind of, and this was for a group that had a product called Fusion IO and is that's actually all was that flash or solid state? It's like a drive I on a car. I think it was solid state. It was really it was really an awesome little product. But the cool thing is they were using that just to draw a lot of people in and they were throwing t-shirts and a lot of times what they do is they kind of line up three people and they cheer for them, whoever rode the best or got the most cheers, but they were actually giving away like a hundred bucks. Wow. Wow. But at the same time, they were just it was just another way to draw people in, to go look at their product. Sure. Sure. Yeah, sure. I stopped there today and they were like, do you want to get on? I'm like, no, because no. it'll so be on YouTube. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> in in fact, when we were there, that one, that one lady got on there and then, you know, every geek in the place is like, cameras. <laughs> it was. It was really bad. Of course, of course, the bad thing, I was sitting there with our camera doing the same thing, so. <laughs> yeah, but it was a mechanical hard drive. <laughs> what are your thoughts on cloud computing? You know, what do you got? Amazon S3 now, all kinds of stuff like that, where like yeah. a small developer, you know, an independent developer, I should say, can make some sort of application leverage, you know, some gigant or server farm somewhere or something like that. What are your thoughts on? Yeah. Uh, some of that I think is actually pretty cool, and they they talked about this in a couple of keynotes, talking about, you know, whether it's the cloud computing or the new thing they're coming out with now, calling the stateless. Um, stateless computing and like I said you see a lot of that with your Amazon S3 um, the Google App Engine the same thing they're doing now they're providing that platform and it's kinda interesting because people can develop their applications and you're running in Google's infrastructure but you're not having to spend all that time building in all the scalability you know and that takes a lot of effort to really do that well they're doing it for you Twitter could use that Sorry. <laughs> I think it gives it gives smaller developers with a brilliant idea the chance because otherwise you've got to go colo a server, you've got to buy the server, you've got to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on the hope that something will get big enough to right, make you money. Right. And if it doesn't even get big enough for the hardware, and I've seen guys that have built some awesome product that didn't take off, sure. and then they're trying to sell all their hardware and their racks of servers yeah, because yeah. they've sunk a bunch of money into it and it just didn't happen even though it was awesome. So at least you can get your idea out there and find out you know, what the take of it is, is going to be on, so. Like you said, it kind of gives the small developer a better chance? Yes. I know like the uh, Google, their, their entry level, um, right now I think it's uh, blocked off. They only had certain number of invites when they first released the App Engine, but it allows for up to five million page views a month for no cost. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of web traffic. And then after that, they're going to, they'll eventually, when they have it production, they'll have released tiered pricing. Well, for a lot of people, if you get an application out there, you get your idea, and you're up to the point where you're getting five million page views a month, hopefully you should be at the point where maybe you could be interesting some, you know, VC funding or some kind of start, you know, startup seed money. And like Chris was saying, how are you going to come up with an infrastructure that's going to support that without having to land a lot of money or something?